Hi folks, welcome to this video on Huxley's sliding filament theory, okay? So this is a theory of how muscles contract. Um, and what we've got to look at in terms of this is the smallest contractile unit of a muscle, which is a sarcomere. So what we've got here is this, what we call a Z-line, this black z zigzag line, and this one here, everything between those two lines is what's called a sarcomere, okay? Now for this moment in time, forget all these Z-lines and H-zones and A-bands and I-bands. Concentrate on a couple of key things, right? These red filaments, what we call protein filaments, are myosin filaments and they are thick filaments. These blue ones are actin or thin filaments. What are they both made of? They are both made of protein. So when we do our training, our resistance training, we actually damage slightly these actin and myosin filaments create little micro tears in each of them and then when we recover and eat our protein they repair a little bit thicker a little bit stronger each time but the myosin will always be the thicker of the two actin are always going to be the thinner filaments right how does a muscle contract what we want is this the end of the sarcomere here and the end of the sarcomere here to get closer together we need this z line to move closer to this z line okay so we want the actin to slide past and over the myosin filaments. When the sarcomere shortens, the muscle will contract. So that is what a muscular contraction is, should I say. At AS, we were medulla mad, the medulla controlled heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure, all those things. What we're obsessed with this year, in terms of anatomy and physiology, is the cerebellum. That's the part of the brain that controls all our muscular movements. So what we're going to have is to instigate, to create a muscular contraction, is we're going to have an impulse sent from the cerebellum. Now what's going to happen is that is going to cause a release of calcium ions at the muscle site, at the site of the sarcomere. Okay, now why, why is that? What, you know, we always associate calcium with... Um, bones and teeth, but we don't associate it with muscular contractions. What's the role of calcium? Well, hopefully I'm going to draw a bit of a diagram now to explain it to you a little bit better. Right, possibly the worst diagram in the world, but hopefully you'll see what I'm trying to achieve. What you've got here is, and I'll just make sure I've got another one here. This here is in the actin filament, the blue actin filament. Now, this little cavity here is called a binding site, okay? Now, when we want a contraction to take place, these tentacle kind of structures here that look like arms, they are actually called myosin heads. And here's one here. I've just flipped it the other way around. So here it's hanging vertically. I've done it more horizontally. So maybe it should hang a bit vertically like that. When I want a contraction to take place, this myosin head has got to fit into the binding site on the actin filament. And then we can have a power stroke take place, i.e. the myosin can lock into the actin and pull it that way, okay? Because we're on this side of the sarcomere. When the actin slides that way, this band is going to move in and the sarcomere is going to shorten, okay? Where does calcium come into this? Well, worst diagram in the world, but we've got two little other colours come in. Troponin and tropomyosin. Their job is to cover the binding site. Why? If we can't cover the binding site, we can never relax our muscles. Those, that myosin head there is always going to want to get into the binding site if that binding site is exposed. Okay? So if you didn't have something, structures covering the binding site, your muscles would be in a constant state of contraction, which isn't very good. Okay, so what we've got is we've got troponin and tropomyosin covering the binding sites. When I release the calcium, it attaches to troponin, which moves tropomyosin, and that exposes the binding site, and the myosin head can get in and make a cross bridge. Okay, so let's get that down so we can build this answer as we're going along. And by the way, what I would say, just because it's worth a mark, is saying that this calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Those biologists in the room will know what I'm on about. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is basically the fluid that exists in, in the muscle tissue. So the calcium is floating around inside that sarcoplasmic reticulum. When that impulse from the cerebellum, cerebellum sorry, reaches the muscle site, the motor end plates, it causes a release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum releases the calcium into the muscle, uh, in, in, into the sarcomere. Okay, so this calcium attaches to troponin. 
this troponin then moves the tropomyosin and now that binding site that little divot thing there is now exposed these two this yellow and this green blob troponin and tropomyosin are now out of the way and the myosin head can now attach so there we have it the myosin head attaches and creates a cross bridge okay What's got to happen now is the now the myosin head is in the is in the binding site on the actin filament. It's going to pull that way. Okay, so the actin filament is going to slide that way. So we're talking. Remember, we're talking about um, this side, this end. You know, this side of the uh, sarcomere. We want that Z line to move inwards, and that's what's going to happen. And we call that a power stroke. And what happens as a result of this power stroke? Well, the actin will slide past the myosin and the entire sarcomere will shorten. Now, if you think along the length of, let's say, your bicep, you have a muscle fibre that runs from one end to the other, from origin to insertion. Along the length of that uh, muscle fibre, you have got thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of sarcomeres. I don't know, okay? each running end to end. So what you've got, as you can see in this diagram, there's one sarcomere, but obviously as you can see down here, there's another sarcomere there and another sarcomere there. If each one of these shortens by a tiny amount, add all that together, the muscle shortens by a large amount and that's how we produce a contraction. But that's what you, we've written down here is how a muscle contracts according to Huxley's sliding filament theory, okay? Hope you found this video useful, folks. It's a difficult concept. There's no denying that. It's really, really complicated. It's repetition that's going to help you to understand this. If you use the internet, you sometimes get some very good animations of this taking place that can sometimes bring it a bit more to life, more so than what I've done here. But they're the key points, and that's what takes place in order for a muscle to contract.